Hello, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. Thanks so much for joining our webinar today, presented by our partners at Costa Rica Sun Tours. Um, we're thrilled to have them um, here today to provide a short and sweet deep dive into two of the popular regions in, in Costa Rica, that being Arnal and Monteverde. Um, in this 20, 25 minutes, they'll highlight logistics of getting to and from some of our, uh, to, to and from the areas. They'll highlight some of our favorite properties, um, certainly the many activities and, and uh, that are available in these areas and the benefits of working with Costa Rica Sun Tours. <clears throat> You'll hear, um, from Alex Arias, one of our amazing guides, and um, as well as Jose Carlos Brenes, who knows the properties inside and out, and from Leo Chavez, who will pop in from time to time. He is the Director of Operations. <clears throat> we'll be recording this and sending through to you afterwards. If you have any questions during the webinar, please use uh, the chat or Q&A box, and we'll address those at the end. So with that, uh, Alex, I'll hand it over to you. Uh, thank you, Sonia, and thank you everybody for joining us in this little presentation about Arenal and Monteverde. So we're gonna spend some time telling you what to do, where to stay, how to get there, and some of the experience that we will provide from Sun Tours. Okay, um, for those who don't know, you probably know what Costa Rica is, but that's an idea what Costa Rica is. It, we only occur, um, use 0.03 percent of the planet in Costa Rica and how do you get to Costa Rica there are direct flights from different cities from the US and also you can fly direct from other all these cities direct into Liberia so we have two international airports in Costa Rica so you can use the one that is more convenient for you or your clients So one of the best or the more important things that I want to mention to you guys is about our guys and our host, dri um, host um, driver host, sorry, in Costa Rica. That makes a big difference. I always say people in my case, uh, that's me right there by the way, um, we are different tour guides because you know, most tour guides take you to tour places, but we wanna make the difference. So we want you to see and your clients to see Costa Rica through our eyes. So each of these guys have their own uh, secret special spots that they're really happy to share with uh, your clients. So let's start with Arenal. How do I get to Arenal? There are different ways to get to Arenal. And it takes between three to four hours to get there if you go straight. But again, when you go with one of our drivers or one of our guides, it takes more time because again, there's so many places to see on the way that we always stop and enjoy whatever we see along the way. So for example, you can go from directly from San Jose to Arenal in about three and a half hours, or you can go from Liberia to Arenal in about four hours, or you can go from Monteverde to Arenal in about three and a half hours. If you drive around the lake, you can also take a shortcut car and then take a boat through the Arenal uh, Lake, which is have amazing views of the volcano as well. Also, if you don't wanna do that long drive, you can fly directly from San Jose into Arenal. You can take a shuttle, you can take a local airline, or you can even use a helicopter service that we are happy to provide. So where to stay, this is the best um, part. And I want you to um, tell my friend Jose, to explain you all these places. Jose, are you connected there? Well, this is the Najara Resort. I just wait for Jose to get. Can you hear me? Jose, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? You. Yes. Yeah, I can hear, yeah, they can hear me. Sorry about that. Um, Arenal Volcano has become an, uh, an adventure destination by itself. World renowned, beautiful rainforest and beautiful volcano that you know sometimes it's difficult to look at, but we'll start with the beautiful properties. Um, Nayara, the Nayara Resort started with um, Arenal Nayara, 
then Nayara Springs, and now the uh, Nayara Tented Camp. That's three different properties within one large property. Um, I would say ni uh, Arenal Nayara, it's suitable for um, families um, um, with small kids or older kids. They have their own swimming pool. Um, and it's uh, a part of the uh, uh, Nayara experience. Then we have the uh, Nayara Springs, which uh, are for couples and adults only. This is in a different section, also secluded in the, in the forest. And it's connected by a bridge from the Nayara Hotel uh, into the Nayara Springs. Nayara Springs is certainly a splurge for everybody. Um, all of the uh, rooms have a plunge pool um, and views of the volcano and rainforest. The new additional addition is the Nayara Tented Camp which uh, is just open in December, so uh, we haven't been able to visit it yet, but it's promising to be one of the best and most anticipated properties in the country. Uh, all of them come with uh, plunge pools, and it's great to connect um, through a bridge um, for families that have more than five kids or, um, or, 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 you know, or two couples even that want to spend uh, time there. Um, then uh, we have Tabacon Resort. Tabacon is uh, on the foothills of the volcano. It's renowned also because of its thermal springs that come from the tip of the volcano. Um, it's a great hotel. It's, five, it's a five-star hotel as well. It's great service, great breakfast, great food. The advantage of staying at the Tabacon Resort is that it gives you unlimited access to the thermal springs. So it's great to, after a tour of hiking and, you know, and visiting the rainforest, uh, and trekking is always great to go to the thermal springs and soaking up. Uh, so that's a very added, added value, a perk that a lot of people get to enjoy uh, at Tabacor Resort. Um, most of the rooms have air conditioning. Um, one of the uh, great things about working with uh, uh, these hotels and, and our relationship with Costa Rica Santurce is that they usually assign the best rooms to our uh, clients and guests, and, um, and it gives them uh, a better chance to uh, enjoy the properties. Then we have the Grand Dam of Arenal Volcano. That's what, it's, uh, that's what I call it, the Springs Resort and Spa. This hotel is suitable for the utmost you know, client that is looking for the best perks and, and the best pampering, for sure. It's the only resort of this caliber in the area. It's very large, it's great. Um, a lot of celebrities have stayed there. It's made him you know, very renowned and very famous, but it's got different sections of thermal springs throughout the property. So it's great for, you know, honeymooners, for families, for anybody that wants to have all the perks included in a big resort for sure. Great views of the, of the volcano, uh, very different type of rooms, um, you know, Alta Vistas, Guest Vistas. So the, depending on where you are in the building and in the area, you know, the prices uh, differ. Uh, but all of them have great views of the volcano and a vast view of the whole area of Arenal where you can see Cerro Chato and all the mountains. So it's great for your high-end clients for sure. Same thing as Nayara, but this one's a little bit more, I would say, more grand in terms of perks. Uh, the Arenal Observatory Lodge, certainly one of the best uh, locations in, 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 the, in the area. It's got one of the best views of the volcano, as you can see there. It's a little bit more modest, but it's great for nature lovers. It, it's irreplaceable when it comes to um, hiking and, and wildlife in the Arenal area. Um, the rooms are great. They all face the volcano. Um, some of them face the forest. Um, it's a, I would say it's a maybe a three and a half star hotel. It's the farthest of all hotels in Arenal for sure. So uh, because it's way up in the mountain, closer to the national park, and you can see the uh, Arenal Lake. Uh, so staying in this hotel um, and doing all the same activities that everybody does in the other uh, the other hotels, it, it means that it will require a little bit more uh, money to. Uh, add the transfer to get there uh, and also in time. But it pays off because you're not gonna see nature as much as you would see in this place uh, for sure. Um, yeah, Jose, I wanted to add there that this is probably one of the, our, as guides, one of our favorite places to stay. Correct. Because all the value of the wildlife, birding and trees and rainforest that we can see there. So when you travel with us and people spend time with our guides there they go and explore and they definitely see way more than if they're doing by themselves absolutely this is this is a nature uh, uh lodge for sure uh so definitely recommend this one 
for people looking to immerse in the, in the, in the wildlife and, and to you know, appreciate the beauty of Costa Rica and the area for sure. They have a, also a little um, museum set up by the Smithsonian Institute mm -hmm. to actually came in the old time, the old years, they came to do a lot of studies about the volcano. In that, and you can still see the computer and some of the pictures and also all the, the studies that they've been done in that area. Arenal Springs, cute hotel, very boutique. Um, it's in the perimeter of the volcano. This is how most of the hotels look in Arenal. They all face the volcano with independent casitas, very comfortable satellite TV, comfort, you know, king size beds, air conditioning. They all face the volcano with porches, great th swimming pools. Um, highly recommended for anybody, for anybody that's, you know, that just wants to spend time in Arenal and, uh, and, and be in a very comfortable environment. Um, we have a great relationship with them and uh, the manager always assigns the best rooms to our clients. So that's another perk of, uh, of traveling with Costa Rica Santurce for sure. Um, and it's also very easy to uh, connect to La Fortuna. So you could, you know, uh, spend a few days here and then, you know, taxi into La Fortuna within a 20 minute drive. Um, and then, you know, um, have other meals and try local restaurants for sure. Very comfortable. It, it works for anybody. Very cute and very boutique as well. Okay, thank you, Jose. Now that you know where to stay, now let's talk about what to do in Arenal. So, first of all, very uh, famous hanging bridges. There's this facility in Arenal, Mexico, where you can go and enjoy these hanging bridges and see the forest from the bottom, from the middle, and also from the canopy. It's a great way to experience and to understand what the rainforest is. So, Rafting, if you're into the adventure, Arenal is like the mecca of the adventure traveling in Costa Rica. If you think about any adventure activity, you can do it, you can find it in Arenal. Canopy and zip lines. Canyoning, it's a new adventure thing. You go rappelling and waterfalls. Of course, you're gonna get wet, but people really enjoy. And I've seen kids from four years old to old folks about 85 years old doing this activity in Arenal. Of course, hiking, we have different places to go hiking. There are different trails and different facilities around the volcano. And of course, hot springs, there are many different places where you can, after a long day of activities, you can go and take a dip in the hot springs, the mineral water from the volcano. Also kayaking, you can do kayak at Lake Arenal. Arenal is the biggest lake we have in Costa Rica. It was it's a man-made lake. It was built to produce electricity and also for irrigation. As we mentioned before, one of the highlights of that area in Arenal is the wildlife. Also cultural experiences, especially when you travel with our guides. Remember, we know people, as I told people. So we, need, we know where to go and when to go just to avoid crowds. Arenal is a, a major destination and most of the places are really crowded, but our guides, they know when to go there, what time would be the best time to enjoy all the nature, all the wildlife, and also to skip the crowds. And if you're into birding and your clients is into birding, which is a big thing these days, Arenal is a must to go destination for birders. Leo, you wanna add anything to Arenal? Uh, thank you, Alex. Yeah, I just was thinking, uh, going through all these um, beautiful pictures that, uh, that uh, I have to say that it has been 30 years of exploration in the area. We have been uh, traveling to Arenal and, and do a lot of research. So there is a lot of field trips behind uh, these beautiful properties and, and also exploring the different areas that Arenal uh, has to offer to the visitor. Uh, and that's why we can come up with all these options for you. And, 
So I just 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 was thinking about that 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 there is a lot of hours of of field staff uh, visiting and making sure that everything should run smooth and nice for the visitor. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. One more thing that I want to add here, you know, when you travel as a tourist, there are all these doors open to you, but when you travel with one of our guides, it's not only that door, but it's a red carpet. When we go to a restaurant or to a facility, they really welcome our clients because they know the, client, uh, the type of clients that are traveling with us, and also they know the company they travel with. There's a big difference. So now let's talk about Monteverde. How do we get to Monteverde? Again, if you drive from San Jose, it will take you about three and a half hours to get there. This is if you go straight. But again, when you travel with us, we know so many places and all the secret spots that it's gonna probably gonna take more time because we will stop uh, in a little soda, little restaurants, uh, fruit stands. You get to try the real culture of Costa Rica. When you come in from Liberia, it take about, again, three and a half hours, or you can go to Monteverde coming from Arenal. So it's gonna be three and a half hours. Remember, you have the option to go car, boat, car. That means you go from any of the hotels from Arenal to the lake. You do a lake crossing by boat, beautiful scenery, and then you go back in the car for another maybe hour and a half to two hours to Monteverde. It's important that I forgot to mention you uh, with, uh, what happened after you travel to one of these destinations. For example, it's easy to connect Monteverde or Arenal with the major um, beaches in Costa Rica. You can go to the northwest part of Costa Rica, to Guanacaste, or you can even travel south to the Central Pacific in Costa Rica, uh, where Man Manuel Antonio is, for example. Um, where to stay? Let's talk about the hotels, and I'm going to ask my friend Jose to go through these hotels in Monteverde. Senda, the best one, the cute one. Um, very boutique, beautiful gardens, great rooms, very comfortable rooms, uh, furnishings, modern, great food. Senda offers uh, stunning views of the Gulf of Nicoya. Um, you know, when you are high up in the elevation, you can see the sunsets uh, in the summer days. Um, over the Gulf of Nicoya and Guanacaste. So it makes it a very special property. Great food, um, independent casitas, and it's great for families as well or couples. Uh, the the two-bedroom Senda Suites uh, can, you know, can host up to six people, you know, so it's good for um, a large family or even, uh, you know, three couples. Um, definitely, it's walking distance to the town of Santa Elena. Um, so it's great to, you know, if you spend a few days in Monteverde, you can dine in one night in Senda, and then you can enjoy, uh, try the local restaurants in um, in uh, the town of Santa Elena in Monteverde. Definitely recommend it. It's our top property for sure. Great views and the weather is amazing. It's always a uh, great service. It's part of the Cayuga collection. As a guest of Senda, you have access to the Aguti private reserve. Um, so it's also an added value and bonus and our clients get to enjoy. Um, that's a nice hotel. I remember I was sitting there in one of those um, benches there with clients and he was asking me, Alex, tomorrow we're going to hike at the reserve. Are we going to see a Quetzal? And immediately a Quetzal flew right in front of us. <laughs> so that's uh, an amazing experience there. Quick, okay. quick, quick notes on the Quaker, Alex and Jose, that there's a lot of forest protected in Monteverde because yeah. of the early uh, conservation work by the Quakers that came from Alabama back in the 50s. Monteverde Lodge just re renovated their rooms. Um, very modern, very uh, there, it, 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 this is sort of like a, a, a whole hotel, um, beautiful gardens. They have a swimming pool. Uh, heated swimming pool. Uh, all these rooms have been renovated entirely. Um, some of them have balconies um, and some of them just have the windows. Uh, great food, great ambience. Um, I usually use it, uh, sell it for groups as well. Um, and uh, it works really well. It's also walking distance to the town of Santa Elena. Um, Poco Poco, it's a smaller hotel. It's budget friendly. Um, it's a little, um, it's also close to the town of Santa Elena, but it, it works for, you know, your budget clients, uh, people that are, you know, willing to go to Monteverde and enjoy the outdoors, but they don't want to necessarily spend too much money. This is the Quetzal room, which is very suitable for, you know, a family of four 
you know, two adults and two kids or even for adults. Uh, great. You know, this is the only place actually in Monterrey that has air conditioning, although the temperatures, you know, usually are in the mid 60s um, during the day, um, upper 50s. It's it's you know it's uh, it's a convenience for people to have air conditioning, although you don't really need it. Trap Family. This is one of the closest resort hotels to the um, Monte Verde Club Forest Reserve. Um, so and it's a little farther away from the town. So if people that want to be you know just uh, get up in the morning and walk to the Monte Verde Reserve, this is uh, uh, an added value. Uh, we use it all the time. It works really well for any type of client. You know, it's about three and a half stars, but it works really well. Great food as well. Okay, thank you, Jose. Now, again, that you know where to stay in Monteverde, let's talk about what we can do in Monteverde. Um, again, hanging bridges. They have similar um, activities if you compare Arenal with Monteverde, but what is unique is the forest. We talk about in Arenal, we mentioned the rainforest. Monteverde is famous because of his cloud forest. So they have different walkways, hanging bridges that you can go and visit during the day. And also the world famous biological um, reserve of Monteverde. So people, they wanted to see a Quetzal. So they go and travel to Monteverde in order to see a Quetzal. And traveling again with our guides, we know people, so we always ask the local guys and people who will know where the Quetzals are to maximize the chances to see this beautiful um, bird. This is a Quetzal. So that's a big reason to go to Monteverde, trying to spot one of these beautiful birds. Plus the good coffee, Alex, in Monteverde, right? Ah, of course. Let's learn about coffee. There are different places where they offer um, coffee tours but we're trying to maximize the best experience of seeing the best plantations and of course, to test the best coffee from Monteverde. Sky Trek Adventures, again, hanging bridges and zip linings. This is one of my favorite places to do a zip lining um, in Costa Rica. The highest cable is about 600, meter, uh, 600 feet high and the longest cable is about half a mile long. You can have find yourself going 50 miles per hour on a pulley through the cloud forest and through the clouds. Um, Curicancha, I really like this place because in the meantime, most people will try to go to the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve. We like to take people here to this um, Curicancha Reserve. And it's a bit, one of the best places to see a kid. So it depends on what part of the year they will be located in different sections all on the reserve. And guys, um, once again, before we finish this presentation, I just wanna mention again, the value of going to one of our guys or host drivers. Again, we know people and we wanna share all this knowledge that we have through all these years guiding in Costa Rica. We want your clients to really experience the culture, um, the environment, everything uh, that we offer in Costa Rica. Um, I don't know if Leo wanna add anything to this. Yeah, no, just, just to remind you that, that ideally the combination of the rainforest and, and the adventure capital of Costa Rica, which is Arenal, plus the cloud, the misty forest of Monteverde, it is like, like a dream trip. But if you have no time to do that, so you always can go from Arenal to the beach or from Monteverde to the beach. So any of those two habitats and well-known sites in Costa Rica will give you great memories. Yeah. And one more thing, you know, we help you to get out of the crowds all the time. Our stops in route and we know where and when to go so we can avoid the crowds because, you know, these days they say Costa Rica is too crowded. It may be crowded if you travel by yourself, but traveling with us, we're gonna be sure that you skip those crowds. And last but not least, I want you, I want to invite you to stay tuned to our next presentation. We'll let you know when that's gonna happen. And we're gonna talk about the South Pacific and the Corcovado area, that area in the south part of the country. And guys, uh, everybody, thank you very much for joining us today.
I hope this is going to be very helpful for you guys. And if you have any questions, you can contact us through our web page or you can call us at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. I do have um, just a few questions. That was that was great. And I'm sitting here, I think, for my second webinar in a row, watching tons of snow fly out the window. <laughs> now oh, nice. Of sitting uh, somewhere. Nice in the and sunny place. here, Tanya. Was that? Nice and sunny here. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Um, that actually brings me to one of the questions we have, which is, um, which is, is there, are there preferred times of year to visit both or either Monteverde or Arenal? Is there, I know it's a difficult and a very big question, but in general, is there? Jose Carlos, you want to go through this? Yeah, well, technically we do have two like seasons, you know, summer that goes from you know, the end of December through the end of April and then our rainy season or green season it goes from May through November. However, these areas, you know, you, I mean, this is the rainforest. You can expect the passing shower anytime. And even in Arenal, when it's sunny and beautiful, uh, you can have a passing shower in the afternoon. Um, same as Monteverde, it's misty. Uh, anytime during the year, it's great to visit these areas. Um, of course, December, we have a lot of traffic, people coming, you know, to, for the holidays. Um, you know, oddly enough, we go through these cold fronts in, in Costa Rica coming from the Caribbean side uh, during the last two weeks of December, uh, early January. So as, as, as much as these areas are great to enjoy the outdoors, it's always best to bring your, you know, your parka and your rain uh, gear because um, you definitely going to get it wet <laughs> no matter what time of the year you go but it's you know this is the forest I mean just you know these areas are just beautiful and suitable for any time of the year for sure even in the, in the rainy season doesn't rain the whole day mm -hmm. I would say people a normal day would be like nice sunny mornings and then rain for a couple hours in the afternoon that's it so you can travel to Costa Rica any time of the year yeah. The, the, the advantage of having Liberia International now um, that open a new uh, way to visit the northern part of the country is that it, it definitely reduces the, the, the hours that you're going to be on the road. And you can easily connect, you know, either out in Alamonte or either with the coast, with Guanacaste, you're going to be there for a few hours and then you jump into a ch shuttle transfer to Liberia International under an hour from your beach hotel. So a lot of our circuits have... Um, a change over the years where people don't even have to come to San Jose. They just do a lot of round trip Liberia and they take advantage of just the abundance in different areas of doing Monteverde Arenal and combining the beach. It's a very different uh, circuit of, uh, you know, of, of trying to um, do this, but um, it's very suitable because it minimizes the distances on the road. Ah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. That's, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, I do know that I, I was, I have been actually several times to Costa Rica now and, and being there with the guides in the rainforest or the cloud forest when it starts raining, it's sort of a, a happy dance because boy, we just wouldn't have it without the rain, right? Correct. <laughs> um, so just a, another question, um, a typical length of time to spend in either area. I know that a lot of, depending where people are coming from and their interests, um, this could vary greatly, but if, if you had to choose sort of a typical amount of time, amount of days or nights, what would you suggest? I would say two nights minimum in Arenal and two nights minimum in Monteverde, uh, for sure. That was, that's gonna give you the best glimpse of, those, of these two areas and, and a full day. As long as you have a full day to enjoy all the activities, then you're good. Um, a lot, you know, if you see it in the map, these two are, are close to each other in a map but it takes a few hours to reach one another mm -hmm. um, so long as long as you spend one full day to do most, most of the activities then you're fine um if you do three nights in arenal and two monteverde should be okay as well if you're if you're more of an active person uh but two and two should be ideal okay and if combining it just one of these areas and the beach would you uh, definitely three nights at minimum um, three, two nights minimum, yeah. Three nights okay. in Arenal and four nights at the beach for a seven night package. That's ideal, yeah, uh, for sure. Nice itinerary. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and the only other question was how long is the flight to Arenal and is it just from San Jose or is there one from Liberia as well? 
The flight is about uh, 30 minutes from San Jose to La Fortuna. Uh, and then a transfer to the hotel, which can, depending on where you stay, can add, it can add another 20 to 30 minutes. Um, from, and, the, and these are on, on local domestic airlines like Sansa and uh, Skyway. Uh, mm -hmm. From Liberia, it's a little more tricky. Um, uh, you can only reach it by a charter plane. Uh, there are ways to do it, but there's always a, like a stopover here and there. And by the time you add the airport check-ins, the length of the transfers, and the time on the plane, you might as well just be on the road. So it's okay. always tricky, and, and since it has to be chartered, then the prices you know, are considerably high versus you know, domestic flights from San Jose, but it's doable. Um, Nayara, for instance, they, they now have a plane, um, and uh, it's easier now to connect Liberia to uh, Nayara on a daily basis. Um, okay. Which is great. Yep. So I didn't know that. Yeah, it just happened. It just they, they just opened it, um, offered the service for their guests, and it's now um, even you know um, uh, commissioned with the travel agents and to us. So it's so it's an added value uh, and bonus, of course. Awesome, great to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, thank you so much, Alex, Jose Carlos, and Leo for joining us today. My pleasure. Um, this was yeah, a welcome. Really nice, nice little chat. And Pura vida. We'll, sorry. Pura vida. Pura vida. <laughs> sí, pura vida. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest of your week. And I thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>